Hello, hello, and welcome to Yoga for Knitters. My name is Kim, and I am a yoga teacher and a knitter based in central Alberta here in Canada. And I do these monthly Yoga for Knitters sessions to help you undo the kinks, undo the knots, and feel good so that you can keep doing what you love. <clears throat> I recently had a request to do an episode from a chair for somebody who has uh, reduced mobility. And so I put together this little practice in, that I'm doing in my great grandmother's old rocking chair. The only stipulation, it can be any chair, is that you want to be able to get to the edge of the chair and you want to be able to get your feet on the floor. So my grandma was really short, which is why this is great. I could get my feet to the floor and I have a 90 degree angle at my knees. But if your chair is taller, then maybe you want to put a book or a phone book. Do you know what that is? <laughs> if you're at my age or older, you definitely know what a phone book is. Um, so you want to make sure that you have something under your feet so that your knees are up at a 90 degree angle. So 90 here, 90 here. And we will begin. So with your feet planted on the floor, I want you to just close your eyes and feel the floor beneath you. So I've taken my shoes off, no shoes, no socks, just feet. Feeling the floor beneath your feet and through that, the earth beneath the floor. Your feet are like completely receptive to energy. There's so many energy points in the feet. And if you bring your awareness and attention to your feet, it's much, it's a very easy thing to connect with earth energy from there. So feel your feet grounding down into the earth and feel earth energy coming up into your feet and then flowing all the way up through your body. And then bring your awareness to the, to the sky above you, through the ceiling, through the floors above you, through the attic, whatever it is, until you're aware of the sky, the universe, the stars, the moon, the entire cosmos. And feel that cosmic energy radiating down, coming into the crown of your head, and washing through your body. So you've got earth and heaven. You're plugged in and you're ready to go. So let your hands drop. You're at the edge of your chair. Your feet are grounded and your spine is tall. You're going to inhale the arms up, connecting earth with heaven, and then exhale the hands down. Connecting heaven and earth. Inhale up. Exhale down. One more time. Inhale up. It's so nice to do this with your eyes closed and really feel everything. Exhale down. Good. Now inhale up one more time. Bring the hands together and then drop them down until your thumbs touch your forehead. And I want you to bring your awareness to any tension that may be in the forehead. Um, if you tend to get headaches or, you know, those lines, the elevens, I like to call them of concentration and effort and stress. We're just going to start to open the hands, bring the fingers to the forehead, smooth out those lines of stress, pulling the stress away and out, and then flick it away. Just like that. Inhale the arms up, connecting heaven and earth. Bring the hands to the forehead and then fingertips to the middle of the forehead. Grab a hold of any tension or strain or stress. Pull it away all the way to the edge and then flick it. Get it gone. One more time, inhaling earth to heaven, bringing heaven and earth down into your head, fingertips to the forehead, pull away and flick out. Perfect. <laughs> okay, uh, next thing we're going to do is a little twist. So we're going to keep 
the feet and the hips square to the front. But we're going to twist the upper body. I like to hold my, uh, let's say, left hand onto the right thigh and twist around, grab the back of the chair if you can. If not, just grab whatever you can. So you're twisting the upper body around and back. Big deep breath here. Use your breath to massage your organs. And massage from the inside out. And then as you exhale, we'll come back to center. I took two breaths there. You can take as many as you want. Just make sure that they're quality. Okay, other side, come around. Opposite hand to outer thigh, twisting from the hips up. So we're twisting the whole spine. Breathing deep, massaging the organs. It feels so good. And <clears throat> exhale to come back to center. Beautiful. Okay, we're going to interlace the fingers. Pay attention to which way you did that. Reach the arms up and at the same time take the right foot and cross it over the left ankle. That's your inhale. Exhale, uncross the feet, bring the arms down, interlace in the opposite manner, like you're holding hands with a stranger. Inhale the arms up, cross the left foot over the right ankle, inhale, and exhale down. We're just recalibrating our energies. Back to our original cross, uncross the legs, take the right foot over the left ankle, inhale up, Exhale down. You notice how everything is abs all the time? <laughs> Definitely. Interlace with your unfamiliar grip. Left foot over right ankle. Inhale up. And down and uncross. Good. Following in that same vein where we're resetting our energy, you're going to take <clears throat> the left leg up and over onto the right thigh. It's okay to help your leg. <clears throat> then your uh, right hand onto your left ankle and your left hand onto your right foot. Just like this, we're nice and tall. And if you're already feeling a stretch in your outer thigh, great. If you want to deepen that, just hinge forward a little bit until you get to that happy place and breathe. We don't want pain, but we definitely want to feel a stretch. And this is so wonderful if you have any issues with sciatica, or nerve impingement in the low spine. This can, as long as you're slow and careful, feel really good and provide quite a bit of relief. So breathe into it. Energy goes where breath flows. So you're going to visualize that your breath is going to the outer hip. And it feels so good. Come on up. And we'll cross the opposite leg. So right foot over left ankle. Sorry, left thigh. <laughs> <clears throat> left hand over right ankle. Right hand over left foot. And then take that stretch down to wherever you feel it. One side will be different. You're not equal on both sides. Nobody is. We tend to have a dominant side and we tend to have a more flexible side. So just take it to where you feel the stretch. That's the always the rule of thumb. No pain, no pain. We never want pain, but we do want some discomfort because from discomfort, we can grow. So sweet, sweet discomfort. Breathe into it. Send your breath into your hip. Hmm. This one feels lovely. Great one to do at the office. <clears throat> Okay, if you weren't already at the edge of your chair, you're going to scoot all the way to the edge and turn so that you're sideways. Hold on to the chair, grip the chair with your right hand. So I've turned to my right, I'm gripping with my right hand, and I'm going to reach down and grab onto my left foot. Then direct that knee behind you until you can feel a stretch through the quad. So the front of the thigh and maybe even into the hip. Lift the heart, breathe into it. This isn't passive. I mean, your body is working to keep you stable here. 
Good, and release. We'll scoot around to the left side. Pulling the heel towards your bum and getting that stretch through your quad and hip. I love this one because yoga doesn't have a lot of postures for the quads and yet the quads are almost always too tight and so it's just nice to have those opportunities to open and release. Good. Okay, <clears throat> again, back to the front of the chair. You can extend the legs out long. Our spine is nice and tall, and we're gonna hinge forward until we feel a stretch through the hamstrings. It does not matter how far you reach with your hands. All that matters is what you're feeling in the back of your legs. My feet are flexed, make sure yours are too. We don't want to point the, point the toes in this posture. We imagine that we're, you know, it's kind of like standing forward fold, except we're using this chair for a little bit of support. So breathe here, moving your nose toward your toes. Mm -hmm. And then exhale and inhale, I mean, and come on up. <clears throat> okay, we're back in our original position. Our feet are square on our surface. Knees are 90 degrees. And all we're going to do is finish this with a bit of spinal movement. I've recently been exposed to this wonderful idea about stress and stress release. So <clears throat> maybe we'll move and I'll talk about it while we're moving. So all we're going to do is move the chest forward, lifting the heart, lifting the head and then rounding the back. So it's a seated cat-cow, forward and back. You're pivoting on the pelvis. You can feel that on the chair. You're using the abs to articulate the spine, backwards and forwards. All right, <clears throat> so in the olden days, and I mean the really olden days, like tens of thousands of years ago, when humanoids lived in nature, lived in caves, <clears throat> they had a very dangerous life. Every time you left the cave to forage or hunt or to get water, you risked your life. You could end up against, pitted against any number of wild animals that regarded you as lunch. And this is where the whole fight or flight thing comes in. This is where the sympathetic response for our uh, nervous system evolved. Because you either ran for your life or you fought for your life. But there was always an ending. <clears throat> Anyhow, the point, what I'm trying to make and what I've learned recently is that when we're in that stressful place, the fight or flight, the body is designed to move, either by running or survive or fighting. But we, in our modern days, we're very often not in that kind of physical environment. We're stressed, you know, the boss has just said that the deadline moved forward, or <laughs> knitting on a deadline. We've got some kind of stress, some perceived stretch, and our body reacts the same way. Energy is diverted from digestion, and moves to our muscles so that we are ready to move, but then we don't move. And the worst part is that stress gets built up, built up, built up in our bodies, and it tends to come out as a sore pain in our spine, neck, and shoulders. So by doing a movement like this, this is a seated cat-cow, we're giving our bodies the opportunity to move and to release pent-up tension in the spine, neck, and shoulders. I really like that idea. I think if there's one move that you do every single day, this should be it. So we'll do one more. And then finish by coming back up nice and tall. And there you have it. 
So there's an entire full body seated practice that will relieve tension, that will reset your energy, and will keep you knitting for many years to come. Thank you so much for practicing with me. It's always such a treat to spend time with you. Namaste.